Good evening, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen, I am just super excited about tonight. Look, I'm trying to get my video up. Let's see if it's going to work now. Look, even if it can't come up, we are still going to move forward inside of the word on tonight. Really excited because Number one, we're going to do a little bit of reflecting tonight, and I hope and I pray that tonight's message, that tonight's uh, Bible study ultimately would bring about um, some hope. Also, I pray that it will bring about some encouragement to you all as well. So I'm asking that Reverend Hall would pray us in, and then we're going to jump straight inside of the word tonight. We're going to the book of James, the first chapter and the 17th verse. The book of James, the first chapter and the 17th verse. Good evening. Good evening, TWC. I hope everyone is making the most of their week, uh, making the most of their week. I hope, you know, you're, you're making the most of your week and you're, you're finding a reason to be grateful at a time of sorrow, grief, and confusion, I must say, confusion. So wherever you may be, if you can just join us in the spirit as we bow our heads in prayer. Father God, we come to you requesting, we come to you in agreement in this time of not only our need, but our brothers and sisters needs uh, there in Texas, as they go through something that's unfathomable, as they go through something that just is inexcusable, as they go through something that you just can't, can't seem to put the pieces together. But Father God, you can see you, you can you can you can have your, your, your fruits of the spirit to cascade a, across them, cascade across that grief, cascade across that confusion to give them peace, to put them at a place to where they are not where they are right now. For we do not understand. We do not know the plans that you have for us, Father God, but we have no other choice but to rest and reside within that righteous right hand. We have no, no choice but to rest and reside as your children, requesting that your, your spirit of peace, your, your spirit uh, of comfort, just touch them. Send your angels, Father God, to touch them at this moment. Send your angels, Father God, to soothe them at this moment, Father God, because we don't know the right words to say. We don't, we don't know the right things to do, but you do, Father God. So we ask, we request, we come into agreement at this time and this place at this moment, Father God, that as we come together and as this righteous prayer comes, goes up, that blessings come down in the form of peace, in the form of conclusion to this mess, in, in the form of change in this world, in the form of transition from this evil that has been cascading and hitting us, our families, our friends, our cities, our states, our countries, that it be removed, Father God, that we know that vengeance is not ours, but it is yours, Father God. So we ask that your spirit just begin to move on this place, begin to move in this country, begin to move in those minds, in those places where the devil is trying to create those evil thoughts for evil things to happen, Father God. But God, because you are God. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, as Reverend Will has already prayed, one of the things that I am hoping and praying that we can see in the midst of the shadows that are encompassing our world, in the midst of the shadows that are encompassing uh, the community of Rob Elementary School, um, I am just asking that we all, that we all would uh, come to a place, get to a place to where we can see that God's hand is still in control, that God's hand is still alive, that God's hand is still relevant. Um, and my public statement, my public statement with regards to the shooting that not only has happened um, at Rob Elementary School, but even in Buffalo, New York, that was racially motivated. My prayer, my prayer is that God would give families, that God would give uh, communities this peace. And I use this, I use this, um, uh, I use this scripture very, very often because the New Testament talks about this peace that surpasses understanding. And sometimes we don't know. Sometimes we honestly do not know how or why certain things happen. 
But what it does make us aware of is that there is evil in the world. And in order to truly come back evil, one of the things that Reverend Will and I was, you know, kind of chatting back and forth about earlier today is that sometimes you want to do something about it, that sometimes you want to uh, uh, make right <laughs> all the wrongs of the world. But one of the things that I hope that we can glean tonight from the book of James, we're going to look at James, the first chapter in the 17th verse, is that sometimes we have to learn how to rest in the shadow of God. Because when we rest in the shadow of God, we will see that we are also covered by God. So I want to talk to you all tonight very briefly from the topic. I'm going to talk to you all tonight very briefly from the topic. God, keep me yeah. in the shadow. God, keep me in the shadow. So again, we're going to the book of James. Going to the book of James. The, let's make sure everybody is muted. There we go. Going to the book of James, the first chapter in the 17th verse tonight, the word of the Lord declares this. It says, don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect comes to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens, the be clause changes. God never changes or casts a shifting shadow. So again, for the, for the brief time that I have with you all on this evening, I want to speak to you all from the topic as we delve into this Bible study, God, keep me in the shadow. God, keep me in the shadow. One of the interesting things about James is that it is a book of, of, of true teaching, okay? When we look at the, the story of James and, and his relationship um, uh, with Paul in this letter that he writes uh, to the people, essentially to the people, he gives some really, really good advice. Like if you really want good advice, you can really turn to the book of James. But the first part of the verse says, what is good and perfect comes down to us from God the Father. Now, one of the things that I want us to truly delve in on is that all good things come from God. Now, I know that sometimes that's hard to hear. I know that sometimes it is hard to fathom. I know that sometimes you don't feel as though, I just talked about this a couple of weeks ago, it, it does not feel as though things are good. But you realize on the onset that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So even as it relates to the shadows, even as it relates to the storms that are happening inside of your life, even as it relates to some of the stresses, some of the anxieties, some of the angst that you might be going through inside of your life, no one understand that no, it does not look good. No, it does not feel good. No, it might not be perceived as good, but no one understand that, like I said, all things work together for the good, and I know that, that that sometimes, you know, it is a hard pill to swallow. It is a hard truth to accept. But the Bible never said that we would have good days every day. The Bible never said that we would have an experience, love, joy, and peace every day. The Bible does say that we will have our ups and our downs. It's out of the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. It says that there are going to be some days that you are going to laugh, and there are going to be some days that you are going to have to mourn. There are going to be some days that you are going to have peace, and there are going to be some days that you have total chaos. There are going to be some days when you got money in the bank, and there are going to be some days when you don't have two nickels to rub together. Who am I talking to tonight? There are going to be some days where, mentally speaking, you are in your right mind, and there are going to be some days where you just feel like losing your mind. But my encouragement to you all today is the same way that James said, whatever is good and perfect comes down from God our Father, we need to realize within ourselves that what God has designed for us ultimately will be good for us. And I think that every single person that is here on tonight, every single person that is watching this, 
You all can attest to some things that have happened inside of your life that ultimately cast a shadow upon your relationship, ultimately cast a shadow on your finances, ultimately cast a shadow on your health. Who am I talking to tonight? Cast a shadow on your academic pursuit. There's been some things that have cast a shadow even inside of your career. You know, we have all lost jobs and gained jobs. But at the end of the day, you have realized that even in the shadow, watch this, God was still there. Can y'all hear me? That even in the shadow, God is still there. Even in the shootings, God can still be seen present. That even Now, here's the thing. And I, I say this, I say this so often. I've struggled with this. I'm just going to be very honest with you all. I have struggled with this theologically because I've asked God the question, God, why do you allow the shadows to come inside of our lives? I've asked God that question. I've wrestled with it. I said, God, why do you cause shootings to happen on innocent children? I've asked God, God, why do you allow killings to happen that are racially motivated against specific communities of people? I have asked God, God, why do you allow sickness to happen in the lives of some and not in the lives of others? And I've come by here tonight to let somebody know that God will cast a shadow inside of your environment because it just reminds us of where the sun is. Are y'all following me? Because now watch what James says. This is really where I, this is really where I, where I want to get to. Inside of the second clause, he says he never changes or casts a shifting shadow. James says that God never changes nor casts a shifting shadow. Now, Will, one of the things that I began to ask of the text, I said, what is this illustration? about a shadow, about. I said, James, why are you using the illustration of a shadow? And what God dropped in my spirit was two things that I really do hope and pray encourage you tonight. Number one, we have the shadow itself and its relationship to God. And then we also have the thing that creates a shadow and its relationship to God. If you're taking notes, write that down. Shadows, when we look at this text, can be illustrated as number one, the shadow itself, but then number two, the thing that creates the shadow is being referenced inside of this text. Now, let me first talk about the shadow itself. Let me first talk about the shadow itself. The shadow itself, ultimately, a shadow comes about when there is an obstacle that blocks the path of light. When an obstacle or an obstruction blocks the path of light, it creates a shadow. It creates a darkening. It creates an environment that ultimately seems hopeless. It creates an environment that ultimately seems dismal. It creates an environment that ultimately seems of little, of, 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 um, of, um, of a little activity, okay? The shadow not only represents, watch this, not only represents this dark and dismal, because now watch this, if you are in a shadow, you feel this way. You feel unloved. You feel a sense of hopelessness when the shadow is covering you. You feel a sense of helplessness when the shadow is covering you. You feel a sense of despair when a shadow is over your finances. You feel a sense of your faith getting lower when a shadow comes inside of your relationship. But one of the things that I want to encourage you all on tonight is that the reason why you are in the shadow 
is because you are being covered by something greater than yourself. I don't see y'all saying over there. I don't see y'all saying anything over, over inside the chat. The reason why you find yourself, Will, in the shadow is because you are ultimately being covered by something greater than you are. Tangi, the reason why you are experiencing this overcast inside of your life is because you are being covered by something greater than you are. Miss Wilson, you might feel as though the clouds are rolling in and blocking your sun, but every now and again, even on a hot day, we thank God for the clouds that block the sun because ultimately it is greater than us and gives us the shade that we need in order to stay cool. And one of the things that got dropped inside of my spirit, <laughs> I see y'all over there now. One of the things that dropped inside of my spirit is that sometimes we've got to stop looking at our shadows as shadows and start looking at our shadows as shade for God, as shade from God's covering. Who am I talking to? There are some things inside of your life where you have said, God, this is a shadow. There are some things inside of your life where you have said, God, remove the shadow in my relationship. There are some things where you have said, God, remove the shadow in my health. There are some things that you have said, God, move the shadow in my finances. There have been some things that you have said, God, move the shadow inside of my health uh, with, with regards to my health diagnosis. But I want to challenge us today that instead of us saying, God, remove the shadow, Begin your prayer by saying, God, thank you for keeping me in the shade. Who am I talking to today? God, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for shading my finances and covering them with your grace. God, thank you for shading my health and covering me with your word that by your stripes I am healed. God, thank you for shading my career pursuit because you said that one day I would be the head and not the tail. Who am I talking to tonight? Sometimes you've got to change the perspective of your shadow and realize that ultimately you are being covered by God who is greater than you and that covering, although it might appear to be a shadow, is ultimately a shade. I don't hear y'all out there. Ultimately, it is a shame. But now the second thing, Andre, the second thing that was brought to my attention with regards to this whole shadow illustration inside of the text, James says he never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He never casts a shifting shadow. Okay, now I want y'all to follow me. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me out there? In order for, Tangie, you're going to like this. In order for, let me get just, let me see if I can give y'all like an example. Let me see, let me see. There we go. In order for a shadow to shift, the object that is causing the obstruction between the light and you will shift. Watch this. If you go outside tomorrow, now I know it's going to rain tomorrow, but if you pick a good sunny day and you go outside, the more you move, the more your shadow moves. Well, I want you to think about this. I want you to think about this. The more you move around, the more your shadow moves around. Miss Wilson, the more the clouds move, the more the shadow and the shade also move. The more the object and the more the environment moves, the more the shadow and the shade move. Now, Will, you might be able to preach this one day. The reason why James says 
that God is a never changing or shifting shadow is because regardless of where you move, <laughs> regardless of where the obstacle moves, regardless of where the obstruction moves, regardless of how your environment changes, James says that God is not a shifting shadow. Now, in order for, capitate, in order for a shadow to not shift, it means that the light remains constant regardless of the environment. I feel like running around my office. Y'all are being too quiet out there. I see you, Miss Wilson. See? Regardless of the obstruction, regardless of the environment, and even regardless of where I move, I'm still covered by the shade and shadow of God because God is so big that regardless of what's happening inside of my environment, he can make up the difference. Who am I talking to tonight? And one of the assurances that we have inside of our lives is that no matter where we go, we're covered by God. I feel like preaching tonight. That no matter where we go, we are covered by God. But not only covered by God, but God's light, watch this, God's light, which casts light upon the obstruction and still gives us light inside of our environment. Y'all see where I'm going? Remains constant. This is one of the reasons why inside the Old Testament, David said that even when I make my bed in hell, you are still there. And I don't know who needs to hear it on tonight. But whatever hell you are going through, whatever shadows you might be experiencing, whatever doubts you might be experiencing, whatever stresses or anxieties you might be experiencing, whatever angst or worries or, or, um, or, uh, or, um, or, or battles that you might be facing, know and understand that your God stays constant. That's really what James is talking about. Your God remains constant despite the storm. Your God remains constant despite who's president of the United States. Your God remains constant regardless of how the ballots turn out to be. Your God remains constant regardless of what church you choose, whatever, whatever church you choose to hop from or hop to. Your God remains constant in the job that you're in and the job that you're applying to. Who am I talking to? Your God remains constant when you go into one doctor's appointment and get ready to go into the next doctor's appointment. Your God remains constant that when the bill is due on the first, he'll make a way by the 31st to make sure that it gets paid. Who am I talking to tonight? No one understand that what James is saying, that your God never changes. Your God never changes. Your God never fails or casts a shifting shadow. What James is ultimately saying and what I ultimately, and what I ultimately want to, to hone in on tonight is that when you pray the prayer, God help me in the shadow. When you say, God keep me in the shadow. When you say, God help me get through these shadowy moments, ultimately what God is going to do is tell you to look up and see the glory of my salvation. See, one of the great things about a shadow is that to every shadow, when you look up at the obstruction and see the light beyond the obstruction, you also see the silver lining around the obstruction to let you know that the light is still present. And I don't know who needs to hear it on tonight, but the shadow that you are experiencing, I encourage you to look up at whatever obstruction, at whatever disease, at whatever stress, at whatever worry, at whatever angst is obstructing your ability to see the light. And look at the silver lining around that obstruction. No, things might not look like how you want it to look like, but know that there is light on the other side for your God never changes. Your God 
never presents a shifting shadow because the light that your God brings inside of your life will always trump, watch this, whatever happens in your environment, will trump whatever the obstruction is that is causing the shadow. inside of that environment as well. So our prayer, my prayer for you all tonight is that as you are embracing the shadows of light and as you are redefining them as your shade because you realize that you are covered by God, that you begin to thank God that regardless of where you are, regardless of where you go, Regardless of what's happening in the world or communities around us, regardless of what's happening inside of systems around us, regardless of what's happening with wars around us, we are all covered by God. And that's the good news that I wanted to share with you all tonight. Reverend Hall, please pray us out. Father God, we just want to thank you for your, for the light that surpasses all shadows, for your light that reaches the depths of our hearts, our souls, our minds, that we feel like nobody else can see, Father God, but you see us through and through. You see us in a transparent way. You see us in a way that nobody else sees us, Father God, because you're, you're our Father, our Father, and we thank you that even at this time of heartache, even at this time of pain, that we just want to approach your throne with a grateful attitude, with a grateful mind, with a grateful spirit to know that you are still in control, Father God. You are still in control, Father God, that we can say with full confidence that you are still in control, Father God. And regardless of how things may look, for regardless of how things are at this moment, Father God, regardless of how we may be feeling unsettled, Father God, that you will keep us put together. You will keep us whole. You will allow your Holy Spirit to reside within us to give us that peace that we need at this particular time. Whether it be in Texas, whether it be in Georgia, whether it be in New York, whether it be anywhere, Virginia, wherever these things have taken place, Minneapolis, for whatever reason that evil has been done, Father God, you, has give, you have told us that there is a season for everything. You have told us that you are a righteous God, a just God. And at this time, we come to you and we rest and we reside at your throne because we know as your children, that's what we ought to be. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you all. Oops, there we go. My hope and my prayer is that tonight's message, tonight's word has been a blessing to you all. Listen, we will not have um, a church live on Sunday. I will post something on Sunday, but it will not be live. I hope and I pray that you all have an amazing day. We can continue to keep of those of the Rob Elementary School uh, inside the victims of the Rob Elementary School shooting inside of your prayers. Our thoughts and wishes are with you all. Continue to pray for one another, love one another, and I will see you all next Wednesday for Bible study. Peace and blessings. <laughs>